Hi, this is Inky35, and I am going to continue um, on Daniel from my last video, um, which had to do, which is named Anunnaki, Gods, Marduk, the God of Hammurabi, Cyrus, and the Israelites? Question mark. Now, what I am about to um, display here in Daniel, um, I'm going to go through the history with you guys and see where this leads us. First of all, if you turn to Daniel chapter 514 or chapter 5 period, it says, this is about um, the writing on the wall, but it's stating here that King Belshazzar had given a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. And while Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. And as they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood and stone. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to point out that it says King Belshazzar. Well, in history, there is no king by the name of Belshazzar in the Babylonian kingdom. Um, Belshazzar was not a king of Babylon. And um, also stating right here in 5.2 that it says that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. Um, Nebuchadnezzar reigned from 605 to 562 BCE. Nebuchadnezzar was not Belshazzar's father. This is completely incorrect and this is inaccurate. Um, in Daniel's chapter of 5, if you look at verses 10 and 12, you'll see here that it says the queen hearing the voices of the king and his nobles came into the banquet hall O king live forever she said don't be alarmed referring to what is named king belshazzar in the bible she said don't look so pale there's a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him in the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your king. And I say, appoint him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. So it says, this man Daniel, whom, whom the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams explain riddles and solve difficult problems call for Daniel and he will tell you what the writing means because it's relating to the story of where all of a sudden Belshazzar sees a hand appear and this writing appears on the wall well in any event this queen whoever this queen is that is talking, um, which is obviously the queen of this supposed king that never existed as a king in 
Babylon, um, said these things. Now also, once again, it's pointing out that King Nebuchadnezzar is Belshazzar's father. This is completely inaccurate. Now, the sons of Nebuchadnezzar are evil Merodach, which his name really isn't evil. His name is Ivil. And he reigned from 562 to 560 BCE. Then we have his brother-in-law that took over named Neriglisar, and he reigned from 560 to 556 BC. So after Neriglisar, we have Labashi Marduk, and he was a young king, which according to Nabonidus' seal states that he was unfit to rule and he was assassinated and some scholars believe that he was assassinated by Nabunaid or Nabonidus which came to rule nine months after Labashi Marduk had taken rule in 556. So Nabonidus ruled from 556 to 539 BCE and Nabonidus' son is Belshazzar not Nebuchadnezzar's and um, Belshazzar reigned with his father from 553 to 539 as a co-reigner because of the fact that his father Nabonidus had put away with the worship of Marduk in Babylon now this is where it gets interesting. Now Nabonidus had left for 10 years. So if you go to verses 521 of Daniel, you will see that it is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. And it says, he was driven away from his people and given the mind of an animal. And he lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like cattle. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the most high God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and sets over them anyone he wishes. So here in 521, it's talking about Nabu Naid and his absence because according to king nabonidus own cylinder seal and and uh, historians it states that he um had some kind of illness like an ulcer and so according to king nabonidus own cylinder seal it was not about nebuchadnezzar and also king Nabu Naid's mother was a high priestess in the temple of the moon god Sin. And his god was Sin, and he went away from the festivities of the people so he could worship his god. Because when they would do the festivities of Marduk um, in Babylon, the priest would remove the king's crown and they would have him to take off his crown and to bow down and proclaim Marduk as God, which was against his own God and reverence for the God's sin. Okay. So just the fact that he was worshiping this God's sin um, brings to the attention that and also his mother being a high priestess in the moon god sin brings to attention that he is not related to nebuchadnezzar okay nebuchadnezzar is not his relative he was obviously some kind of relation to 
the Assyrians. So Nabonidus was not related to Nebuchadnezzar and there is a story in another part of his seal which I will read off of in the next video about him going crazy because the people said that he had constructed this god and um, it was a god unlike they had ever seen before and so in the next video I will explain all that also the problem here with Nabonidus um, being around during that time he was gone approximately seven to ten years um, he did not want to worship Marduk because he had reverence for his god Sin which is a son of Enlil now which is very interesting so if you go to Daniel 522 it states but you his son O Belshazzar which is proclaiming Nabon or um, Nebuchadnezzar again to be his father you have not humbled yourself though you knew all this and instead you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven you have the goblets from his temple brought to you and you and your nobles your wives and your concubines drank wine from them you praise the gods of silver and gold and bronze iron wood and stone which cannot see or hear or understand but you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life in all your ways therefore he sent the hand that wrote the inscription so in 522 again he's proclaiming Belshazzar as Nebuchadnezzar's son and the Lord of heaven is Marduk and they had put away with the worship of Marduk and they had no festivities in reverence of Marduk the Lord of heavens the God of the gods the Lord of heaven and earth and they worshiped Nanar sin so in Daniel 5 25 through 30 it states this is the inscription that was written mini mini tekel parson which this is what the words mean Mini, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end tekel that you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting and Paris your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians then at Belshazzar's command Daniel was clothed in purple a gold chain was placed around his neck and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom that very night king of the Babylonians was slain and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at age at the age of 62 well now in these verses Daniel is talking about kingdoms and is proclaiming that the Medes and Persians would take over and it states that this person by the name of Darius of Medes took over Belshazzar and that he was killed that night but who is Darius of Medes because the figure Darius of Mede cannot be found anywhere in history outside of the book of Daniel and it was Cyrus the Great of the Anshans Achaemenids who entered Babylon at that time over the king of by the order of the king of heaven and earth Marduk and remember that there was an absence of the worship of Marduk by King Nabunaid King Nabunaid was the last king of Babylon Cyrus is the one who entered Babylon this is all written in history and took over Nabunaid these two kings have written seals during the time of their entrance and their exit of their reigns these seals proclaim in the proclamation that I put out on my other video of Cyrus 
what he did that he came in by the order of the great lord the god of heaven the god of the gods marduk to come in and to take over the reign of nabunaid nabunaid in his cylinder still states that he was taken over and dethroned by cyrus the great nowhere do you find this person named darius of mead in history there is no darius of mead okay so from chapter six on in the book of daniel it's naming king darius as the king over babylon in 539 bc so this is not the king over babylon um there is a king named darius that came after cyrus um cyrus the great took over in 539 bc and darius came, became the king in 521 or 520 respectively and um within six years of darius's reign and he's a persian he's not a mede he helped fund and build the temple of jerusalem under the order of cyrus of what he said he was going to do okay so that did happen that did happen so in the prophecy of the time of the end of babylon is when babylon was conquered by cyrus the great and don't forget that this was written 400 years later so after this had already occurred this was written by a group arising from the time of the Mac maccabean emergence in 167 and 164 bc which clearly presuppose the history of palestine and alexander the great of 323 bc so this had already occurred these prophecies that are written in the book of daniel had already come to pass so in daniel 9 it states now that darius is the son of xerxes so let's go to chapter 9 of daniel and it says in the first year of darius son of xerxes who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. I just want to mention right here that in Daniel chapter 9, it states, in the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. I just want to put out right here, that this is also incorrect that Darius is not the son of Xerxes Xerxes is the son of Darius and Darius's father was Hystaspes or Vishtaspa and so here we have again inconclusive history i just thought i'd mention that now continuing on well right here he states that the prophet jeremiah was said that jerusalem's desolation would last 70 years so if you go from the capture of Nebuchadnezzar who reigned from 605 to 552 he captured them in 589 to 586 respectively okay 
So that gives us 50 years or 47 years of captivity. You don't count from the time of Nebuchadnezzar 605 to 539. You count from the time of captivity, which was 589 or 586 respectively. So that gives us 50 to 47 years right there. So if you go over to chapter 1020, it states, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. So it states in chapter 11, 1, And in the first year of Darius the Mede, once again, this person that does not exist in history, anywhere except for the book of Daniel, I took my stance to support and protect him. Um, you have to remember that the book of Daniel was not written then. It was written in 167 and 164 BC. So, the story of Daniel um, being ordered by the King Darius into the lion's den is fiction. So, in this event, it takes us forward in time of when the book of Daniel was really written. And it's apparent that the author had a dim history of the Persian Empire and did not know about the kings during that time since it was written with the prophecies proclaimed of the 90-foot tall statue of empires, which was the statue of the head of gold and, and the silver body and the iron and then the feet of clay and which was to represent Babylon and the Medes and the Persians and Greece and then Rome, okay? But the fact is, is that this was written 400 years later, so all these prophecies had already happened when it was written in 167 and 164 B.C. So now, um, you also need to remember that the canons weren't put together yet. It took 300 years after that point, which means altogether from that point on, it took 464 years before they were canonized and put into the Bible, Christian Bible, the Protestant Bible. So the, the depictions representing the dragon and bell and these prophecies, including revelations, which obviously was inspired by Daniel, is about Tiamat being defeated by Marduk. There's Marduk's name again, defeating the dragon. He was the one who defeated the dragon. It was Marduk. So... In Daniel 8, it talks about his visions and about the empires with the horns and four horns grew out of this one empire and all this other stuff. Well, this is all about stating once again that the king of Babylon was Belshazzar. And that he's telling Belshazzar in his third year of his reign that he had seen these visions. Belshazzar was not the king. And the prince of hosts that is mentioned is Marduk who defeated the dragon. The Numa Elish. So this is almost like Gnosticism. This is written history. So all these prophecies had already occurred when it was written. So the book of Daniel with 
the obvious connection with Revelations is a book of fiction. And so, if this was the case that Daniel was ruling with Belshazzar, Nabonidus' son, why wasn't he mentioned by the kings in their annals that Daniel proclaimed that the king stated that the Hebrews was God was the God of heaven and most high when in the king's annal it states Marduk? I mean, this is something that it states that the king proclaimed that their God was the most high God. But yet they're proclaiming the most high God and the king of heaven is Marduk. The Lugal Dimaranchia. That's what it means, the divine king of heaven and earth. That's what Marduk's name means. Lugal Dimmer Ankia. So, this is something to think about. Because they took the past and placed it as the future occurrences that had already happened. And this is history. I just want to mention that in the Qumran versions of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, most of the documents were written or copied between the first century BC and the first half of the first century AD. And so documents from the third group have been identified with some scholars with the Essenes which are a Jewish religious sect living an ascetic communal agricultural life in the region between the 2nd century B.C. and the 2nd century A.D. And so it has been hypothesized that, that the Qumran scrolls are the secreted library of a community, perhaps Essenes, that lived in Qumran and thus survived the destruction of the settlement in circa 68 AD with the Romans and all that. So um, there are startling parallels with these in their influence on early Christianity. And so the Temple Scroll, for instance, um, revealed a list of rules of conduct resembling standard Christian ethics. And then you have... Some scholars that have tried to establish that Jesus and John the Baptist were influenced by or members of a, a Qumran Essene community, but such interpretations are widely disputed, of course, because of theology, because they want to hold on to this prophecy in the book of Daniel, which wasn't even written then, and which is filled with inaccuracies and actually has to rate, relate with Marduk, who is the king of heaven, the most high god, the god of the gods, and back in 167 to 164, they put in these writings, which are 400 years after the fact of Daniel and so the person that wrote this book did not know the kings of Persia and did not correctly compile the kings of Babylon and so it is fiction it doesn't have conclusive factual evidence so um, there's been more recent work by other archaeologists and biblical scholars that have questioned the scrolls of the Qumran ruins and the Essenes so Gnostics anyone anyway I'm going to go ahead and uh conclude this part of the series Anunnaki gods Marduk god of Hammurabi Cyrus and the Israelites question mark so um 
On my next video, I will be uploading the seal of Nabonidus so we can see the time that he reigned, which was the correct king that was reigning during the time that Daniel said it was Nebuchadnezzar. And um, I will show that Belshazzar is Nabonid's son. I will show that Nabonid has his own cylinder cell and what happened with the events in the time that Cyrus took over. Um, not this person named Darius the Mede. There is no one in history. And you can look that up. There is no one in history by the name of Darius the Mede. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. And I will be talking to you all soon. I hope you enjoy this. This is Enki 35